Well, hi there, and welcome back to the Drawing Database. Professor Mark Leone here today, and today we're going to spend 15 minutes with the drawings of our ancestors, our human ancestors, cave artists today in Altamira, Spain, uh, some cave art examples, and also the Lascaux caves in France as well. So we'll look at these two quintessential uh, iconic caves very quickly and really take a look at where drawing uh, essentially recorded drawing got its start. I would probably argue that scratchings on the dirt, the beach, anywhere where marks could be made by hands or even feet or body parts of whatever sort was, was probably recorded before cave art uh, did. And so what you're going to find in terms of subject matter, we'll just start here, right? We can see the image of this beautiful lyrical you know, outline of a bull. And that's really the genesis of our art, uh, our drawing, and our expression to begin with was to express that which uh, human beings, and we're talking somewhere um, dating-wise uh, in terms of time, uh, back to 30,000 uh, scientists think now somewhere between uh, 30 and 32,000 uh, years ago, so certainly during an ice age and certainly before the agricultural revolution as well. So this was our means of recording that which we saw, that which we wanted to control, and that which we wanted to portray not only animals, but um, uh, uh, human-like uh, structures and also the beginnings of some type of uh, written uh, scrapped language of, 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 of sorts uh, as well. Here we see really the lyrical quality painted on the wall, generally blown with some type of uh, earth pigment through the mouth uh, with some kind of straw. Uh, uh, orifice that would be in the mouth and then blown onto the cave walls. And we see this beautiful uh, eye of the bull, the lyrical horn mark in through there. Just a gorgeous, um, I think, representation of what artists were uh, able to record into view um, at that particular junction. With this, there, is, there is no art. There is no education at this point. There is only uh, raw expression, and we begin to see it here in Altamira. We'll go on now to uh, our next image. And the second one here from Altamira, just a gorgeous, um, some type of mammal, deer, deer-like quality for sure. And again, we see the wonderful contouring of the beautiful forms it almost has a feminine quality to that without the, the the actual kind of horns up there so I'm, I'm reading it a little bit more as, as female in this beautiful quality of the description of the head and that just lovely the this nice linear quality of the outline very slowly applied the hoof feet just the, the detail of and the observation of the anatomy of the deer comes through. It would have been interesting to see these artists, these shaman artists, to be trained in Renaissance methodologies. Methodologies, I bet they would have been just absolutely stunning draftsmen or even draftswomen as well. But we can assume that they were male. We can assume that they were important within their tribal culture and they were considered a kind of religious practitioner. And here we have in, in Altamira a bison form, uh, European type uh, animal of uh, hairy quality, horned quality. But what sets this apart is not only its graceful and I think beautiful linear outline that we get across the woolly, woolly connection that we get here. And you can see the delicateness of the the uh, hoofs of the of the animal, but it's the beginning of a little bit of tone, the sepia or sanguine type of, of tone with these herd animals. So it's been probably understood that they were part of sustenance of life and provided uh, not only food but also clothing and shelter uh, for uh, those particular uh, tribes that were nomadic no doubt at this particular uh, time and dealing with very cold weather. So this is also in Altamira. 
Here we are in our uh, first Lasco cave view uh, of, of a few images, and we have several different types of herd uh, animals. We have what looks to be some type of horse, and then of course some type of horned animal, cow, um, maybe even domesticated at this point. And then we cer certainly see horned deer, um, uh, uh, here are venison type animals. And then, and then a running herd that we see coming through down below. So we're, these were probably done at different times, different dates perhaps, but even by different artists. But what they all have in common is a linear quality or an outline quality to them in nice curvy linear rhythmic kinds of strokes, really beautiful curves. Um, what we also see is in the bison, more heavy outlining, contouring, um, much heavier than the others. And then we also see in this, in the case here, a filling in or a silhouette, and a silhouette here of these running uh, bison, or what could even be horses at this point in time, and then also silhouetting or a filling in of, of completely of a tone, an earth tone of the uh, deer as well. So pigments were made by grounding by certain plant materials, earthen materials, um, charred wood materials, vis-a-vis -vis obviously kind of charcoal, and then ground in with saliva and probably some water. And they were able to provide um, enough of a stick or to be uh, adhered onto the wall. There might be even some tree sap or gum sap that would able enable the artist to allow that to actually stick over time. And they certainly did. They They've stood the test of time, 30, 32,000 years of that. So this is, this is uh, Lasco. Here we see a little bit of the indication of the, uh, a human figure with a charging buffalo or bison or some type of uh, ice age uh, animal. We see the horns in through here. And these are rather large on the cave wall. Very intimate kind of art. We see some type of uh, waterfowl with some kind of leg there in the beginnings of another animal over in through here. But we can see and discern that this is probably a male uh, human type figure, very crudely with the larger uh, a bison type animal charging and perhaps knocking and killing a member of that particular tribe and or family. And so we get this recording of the an event, a recorded event, uh, probably a traumatic event that happened in the life of this individual or individuals. Generally, from my understanding, is that um, a, a religious type leader or shaman type leader would begin to uh, induce uh, mind-altering substances, mushroom type uh, substances probably, or some kind of root substance from the earth and begin to perform a ritual or a hallucination into these uh, caves and um, from that it became a very cloistered intimate uh, grouping of moments um, and or moments to record one's um, spiritual entity or connection to the earth and probably one's desires or to control um, that which was uncontrollable like the weather or or um, fearsome certainly beasts as well but we here we again we see the linear kind of quality. So we very much started out drawing as natural born uh, out, outliners. So you can remember times when you would take a pencil, probably all cultures have done this, and where you, you outline, you know, your hand to make a kind of, you know, uh, turkey or a symbol or something. That was the first indication that you could outline a form and, and, make, and make some art. So in the same way, I think that what we do today or have done is what and where we started out. And here we have a really wonderful example of herd animals. It looks like horses here mostly uh, moving in a, just an absolutely gorgeous direction of different size scales, uh, almost a brush paint painted quality to them, and perhaps they were they were brushed by any any kind of plant that these particular artists could could use, or they were also blown by the uh, uh, the uh, mouth orifice of a, a type of blow straw or blow brush, if you will. 
And then the wonderful quality of different line weights we see in contour line, thicker lines and thinner lines and descriptive kind of muzzling here and the horns were really beautiful. And then what I think is fascinating also too is the overlapping or overlaying to signal certainly a kind of a different time. One came on top of the other. So it's not, I don't think it's known uh, what particular, which one came first or what time. I guess that could be carbon dated, but they were, they were um, assuredly done uh, close in time to, together. But a beautiful composition of running, in this case, horses from Lasco. And here we have another Lasco. Uh, cave drawing with some mineral deposits. These is gold deposits or geologic. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but they're mineral deposits. And of course, we see the drawing in black here of what looks to be an elk type animal or a deer type animal with, with very large elk type horns. Maybe maybe something like a moose, but probably probably elk in uh, Europe. Substantial curve to the body here, silhouetting of the head or a linear quality it looks like, and then a blowing or filling in of the paint forms. This probably took quite a bit of time to get on there. It could have been applied with the hands or fingers and also the mouth. Um, wouldn't, it had, wouldn't it have been glorious to be able to, to be a fly on the wall to witness how it was applied conclusively and to see the, the artist in, in their own... Um, intimate and innocent, if you will, naive glory of, of, of their own their own drawing. And then the beautiful curvy linear, you know, spirit of curve. So from a very early stage of human artistic development, we already see the inclusion of, you know, of a very slow kind of gesture with the with the drawing here. And this is also from Lasco.